So here we are again in the lockdown studio at Classic and Sports Car Centre where we're having a lovely day with a, a famous fashion brand um, who are producing their winter catalogue uh, surrounded by many of our beautiful cars. This is my second video of this week on a Jaguar XK150. The car I'm going to present to you, an XK150 SE in Cotswold Blue, is very much the last of the line of the XK series, which started in 1948 with the XK120. Indeed, I'm told that uh, Sir William Lyons designed the XK120 largely to be a test bed for his wonderful new twin cam engine. When the XK120 was announced at the Motor Show in 1948 to a war-weary Britain, it created quite a sensation and the success of the car, both on the track and indeed as an earner of export dollars, is legendary. By the time this car was produced in 1960, we're really at the last of the line. The ultimate development of the XK series, the 150 SE with its uh, uprated uh, engine, with its uh, disc brakes and with the curved windscreen. Uh, externally, the higher wing profile is quite noticeable compared to the earlier cars. So this car's got really lovely body and panel work and as you can see, it's a very understated car with that super blue colour nicely contrasted with the grey leather interior. This was obviously a very high quality uh, repaint when the car was uh, restored. There are one or two minor marks and imperfections. Uh, there's a, a touch-up chip here uh, and there's uh, I found a tiny scratch. I think cosmetically, apart from the odd minor touch-up and a few detail bits on trim, I think the only thing that uh, detracts from it visually probably is the slight delamination that's happening on the uh, windscreen. Laminated windscreens st uh, uh, over a number of years begin to separate and you can see that sort of effect in the corner of the screen there. They, they can be replaced uh, but um, you know that, that's really one of the only obvious external flaws of the car. And now my favourite part of the job really, taking a test drive. So this is a beautiful Jaguar XK150 and it's a car that we've sold before and it comes from an owner that I know quite well. There's an interesting story actually. Right back at the beginning of the, uh, of the company when I was uh, trying to raise money to buy more cars I felt I needed to sell my, my classic car which at the time was a, a beautiful black Bentley Mark VI GMA 563. And I sold it in 1993, so 27 years ago, to a gentleman who uh, went on to become a regular customer of ours. And uh, he, he did a wonderful thing. He, at the 25th anniversary of the company, the staff surprised me because the, the black Bentley was standing outside York Railway Museum and uh, the owner agreed to uh, lend him me, effectively for the summer. So what a lovely man. And this is a car that he has owned. Uh, like all the cars he's ha he has, it's a car you could use. It's a, a very practical, usable and lovely example. Now the previous video that I did um, so earlier this week was of a, another XK150 which uh, I would say is amongst the top two or three I've ever driven and that's largely because it's uh, a very lusty, uh, a lusty engine and it's got that lovely four-speed uh, synchromesh gearbox. This has the original, this would be I suppose more for the purist, it's got the original type of Moss gearbox, it's in very good condition but they are uh, a bit more ponderous in terms of gear change than the uh, later Jaguar gearboxes were. Now I'm going to just wind the window up, it's quite a warm day again, but I'm going to wind the window up so that you can hear the, uh, what it's like for wind noise. So that's third gear, and I'll open it up a bit. Lovely engine sound. And then uh, here we are at 60. Just flick that into overdrive and at 60 miles an hour she's showing 2300 rpm so we're already at normal uh, temperature uh, oil pressure is 
well, about 50 from what I can see, which is perfectly healthy and good. So it's a really nice driving car. The thing that's slightly unusual about it, uh, I haven't had one like this before, is it has a uh, Vicarage power steering unit. Now in terms of its precision, it's, it's very precise and it, it doesn't feel any different to the one that I drove the other day, the black one, which also has a rack and pinion steering system. But at uh, parking speeds, of course, there's very little effort required with this. Because it's come from a good owner who's really looked after it, there's really nothing to criticise on it mechanically. It runs exactly as it should. Battery is showing positive charge. Fuel gauge works. Temperature gauge is holding a steady 80 degrees. Oil pressure is super. There's nothing to comment on it. It drives like they should. So the only difference in terms of uh, using uh, a car with uh, one of these early MOS type gearboxes is that you must be absolutely stationary to put it into first gear or reverse. If you're moving at all then you would crunch the gear. So uh, no synchro on the first, no synchro uh, on reverse, but all the other gears have a synchro. Y you have to accept that it's a sort of 40s design so it's not as slick as a modern gearbox but they work perfectly well. You've just got to be a bit slower with the gear changes. Not as slow as that though. That was me. And away we go. Very sweet engine. That's top gear. Nasty little bend coming up. BMW and I was a bit surprised by that really. Yeah, it's actually a very lively old car.